sleep. The bane of the existence for some and the highlight of the day for others. Sleep is one of the most important things that you can do, uh, whether you are training for something, whether you are working your nine to five, literally your life depends on sleep. You do it for ideally a third of your life. And a lot of people, unfortunately, are doing it wrong. And one of the biggest things that I try to address with any clients that I'm working with and some things that I'm really keen on making sure that I do myself with are going to be these things. One, you wanna make sure that your room is as dark as possible. Our circadian rhythm is synced up to the light and day that our ancestors would have had. And so as the sun rises, our cortisol is going to elevate. As the sun lowers and we get more dark, then we're gonna see more melatonin production and we're gonna fall asleep. But what a lot of people do to disrupt that is they spend a lot of time on their cell phones. Their room looks like an Apple store and they've got their TV, they've got their iPad, they've got their computer, they've got their phone, plus maybe they have their partners. And so all of a sudden your room's lit up like a Christmas tree and it's throwing off your body's ability to go to sleep. So that's one. Two, you wanna get your room as, as cold as possible, almost said it's light. You wanna get your room as cold as possible. A lot of people have too hot of rooms. Typically you wanna be in the range about 68 degrees. Your body does really well with sleeping in really cold environments. Again, the thought is going back to sleeping in caves and, and being in that really cold state. One thing that I really like with this that I've seen success with, with clients is doing contrast showers right before bed. So you do two minutes of warm, one minute of cold, two minutes warm, one minute of cold, and then you go to bed after that. That's gonna shock your body uh, to be a little bit colder and then it helps you fall asleep. Now. When do you go to sleep? A lot of people tell me, oh, I get good sleep, I, I get my eight hours, but they're sleeping from 1 a.m. to 9 a.m. And that's not as good as if you were able to get to bed around nine to 10 and sleep that 10 to two window. That 10 to two window, roughly for a lot of people, is going to be what allows you to get into that stage three, stage four REM sleep. That's when your brain is clearing for radicals. That's when you're getting the most recovery and the most regenerative effects for the body. So if you're training really hard and then missing that window, that's really going to limit and mitigate your ability to show up the next day feeling refreshed or get as many adaptive changes that you want from a muscle standpoint, from a recovery standpoint. And then the last thing that people will do wrong with their sleep is the consistency at which they're going to bed and waking up. So a lot of people will wake up early for work throughout the week and then on the weekends come, they're sleeping in until 9, 10, 11 o'clock. Well, that's going to be the equivalent of traveling to a different time zone three, four hours away every single weekend. So you wonder why when Sunday and Monday hits, it's so hard to get up in the morning. Well, it's because if you were in Seattle, you just put yourself in New York or in Hawaii in that time zone difference. And so you're sleeping in Sunday and then it's hard to go to bed Sunday night. And so what do you do? You get less sleep. Now Monday sucks that much more because you weren't rested. You didn't get the recovery that you needed. And so there's a million other things that sleep's going to impact, but the biggest thing that I just want you guys to take away is that you wanna be cold, you wanna make sure that it is dark, and you wanna make sure that you're hitting that 10 to 2 a.m. window to make sure you're getting the most regenerative effects possible.